Hello, Just Jacks here and welcome to my channel. Today, in this first part, we're back to voiceover. Uh, in the second part, I readdress it, have the audio back on track and explain why. In my attempt at being green and turning switches off and turning mics off when I'm not using them, I turned it off, hooked it up, didn't turn it back on. So, well, I did have it on, but I didn't have it on the right settings. This mic, when it's on camera setting, it will work with the camera, if I remember right. No? Yes. And when I've got it on phone, it works with the laptop or phones. So I had it on fully charged, but on the wrong setting. So all it recorded for this first half was a god awful deep screechy whining sound where it obviously wasn't recording it was recording something but it wasn't recording me um, yeah so I had to get rid of that because that was just no good so I'll do my best at going over what I was trying to go over in this one so with our pom-pom makers and our black and white wool uh, you'll need more white than black. We start with putting the nose in place. So what you're going to want to do with one half of your pom-pom maker, position that black from the halfway section and just below. So around about a fifth if you had to you know, put, put a fraction to it. Um, and that's going to be the nose because you're sort of thinking from the centre of the face out. So you do that for a few wraps and then we'll trim it off and then what we're going to do next is go over the whole section white. Um, not wholly thick on the top, more thick on the bottom, like below the nose and you definitely want to make sure you cover that nose completely with the white. You want to make sure there's a nice distance of white between the black of the nose and where you're going to put the black of the eyes in just a moment. So we're just going to be doing that right now. I'll tap out with a voiceover for a moment and then I'll chip back in when it comes to positioning the eyes. Oh yes, yeah, so when you are applying the white, like I said, thicker at the bottom below the nose, a little bit thinner at the top because you're going to be putting that bridge between the two eyes and the gap between the nose covering it in white. So a little thinner on the top where the eyes are going to sit in there, a lot thicker at the bottom, below the nose, where nothing else is going to sit.
very good start of white covering the nose pretty much completely at this point. I do go back and go over that some more, but now we'll put the eyes in. So the eyes are gonna go, you'll see that there's a bump where the black is obviously thicker than the white at that moment. So you want the eyes to be just above that in that sort of next fifth, roughly. Um, and you can make this quite a bit thicker than the nose because the panda's eyes are quite a bit, you know, the, pa the black panda of the, the black fur of the panda's eyes, there we go, is considerably bigger than the black nose. So you'll, you can be a bit more heavy handed with this. But again, try and keep it in like a wedge sort of shape so it's fanning out, like how the pom-pom is on this, you know, tighter on the centre, a little bit more fanned out on the external bit. Um, and then once you've done that, we'll snip that down again and then we'll re-go over everything with white. So it's going to be white all the way for this piece. So it's going to be white all the way from now until pretty much the end of the back piece. So that's why I say you need quite a bit more white than you do black here. And yeah, keep going. Don't be afraid to make it as thick as you like. So the thicker the better, because we do end up giving this quite a dramatic haircut to get the shape and to highlight the features that we want to.
they let my tea go cold, so I went to make a fresh one. Um, so with these pom-pom makers, they're really, really good for like a couple of quid. Um, you can get like at least two I've seen, which are like packs of two. And they're so much fun, uh, even if you just want to make straight up pom-poms, they're not any pom-pom characters, just they're ideal for making like pom-pom pals. So yeah, what we're going to do with this second part is we're going to start off with max white. White all the way until you've got it as chunky, if not chunkier, than the front. And what you're going to want to do, well, I'll, I'll tell you when we get to, so we're going to put some ears in as well. But I'll, I'll explain that when we get there. Um, so yeah, I'm just unwinding a load of white so it doesn't get too tight as I'm wrapping it around. And yeah, again, be nice and heavy with these pom-pom pals. You want lots of wool to work with because there's always a lot of clipping involved. Um, and also, in part two, like a heads up now, I think I'll put it in, in the description, but you'll want some felting needles. They're really handy and they're going to help us define the eyes and the nose and bind the ears together. Um, so. I don't think I mentioned that yet. I'll usually put these things in the description, but you'll want to do these yourself. Some pom-pom makers, wool, in this particular case, black and white, and that's all you'll need. A pair of scissors or a craft knife, up to you, whichever one you feel more comfortable with. Um, yeah, felting needles. I might be repeating myself. Sorry if I am. But yeah, I'll, I'll let you continue watching and then I'll chime back in when we get to the ears.
we're about to wrap up with the white. Now with the ears, you're gonna want them longer than the rest. So what I do is I slide my index finger and ring finger across the top. Um, and you're gonna to wanna to make sure when you put these ears in place, you're gonna want them a little bit higher than the eyes. So reference your first piece if you forgot what order they're in, you'll be able to tell by the shape of it where the nose is, so then you'll know where the eyes are roughly. And I mean, you can even see it if you, you need to poke it back a little bit just to see where the black is. You want the black of the eyes to pr pretty much line with the ears, the ears to be a bit higher. So say the ears will be in the very beginning or very end fifth, whichever way you're looking at it. And so yeah, you slide your index finger and your ring finger just in the top there and you loosely wrap that last fifth around both the pom-pom maker and your fingers. And this is going to, obviously you don't want it too tight, you want to be able to slip your fingers out nice and easy, but that's going to give you the length that you need for the ears. Because you'll want them to stand out, obviously a bit further than the actual face. And even after trimming it back, you're still going to want to have a bit to play with. So that usually gives you enough to work with and you want to try and keep it as thin a line as possible. So I say that last fifth, but it's, it's like a thin line in that last fifth. I think you will see as I'm doing it now. And then after you've done that a few times, snip it off and snap the whole thing in place. Um, yeah, and then it'll be, I think I have a little check to see if I'm happy with the first part. You can always, go back and add more this is the point to do it before you start cutting so if you want to make it a bit chunkier or if you think a bit more black could go with the ears or a bit more white could just go around the body in general now's the time to do it I choose a craft knife because I prefer when I'm using the pom-pom makers to use a craft knife it's just I find it easier because um, you have that nice groove to work with as well so you won't cut up your pom-pom makers and it's really pleasing whether you use the craft knife or the scissors to start to see the features appear as you're cutting through it's kind of like a reveal I mean this is quite a cool thing to do if you want to do a rainbow pom-pom like do a little ball in the middle and then build it out and out and out and out and then visually slice through it and see all those colors appear slowly like a flower in bloom it's really cool um, you can also use scissors there's a groove there because you've done it in two halves it's easy to slip the scissors in and start snipping away so there's no right or wrong way to how you cut it uh, each to their own like I say I just prefer the look and the feel of the craft knife um, so we're just going to do that. 
get that totally cut all the way around. And then what we'll be doing next is we'll cut a piece of white because the panda is like in the bulk white. You don't want some black hanging in the round, you know, in the middle of nowhere. And that will be our toy right through the middle. So like I said before, there's a groove that runs all the way around both halves of this pom-pom. And that, it totally separates into two pieces, making it really easy to get the pom-pom out at the end. So what you'll do with your tie piece is you'll literally just slide it right in between the donuts, right in between your two layers of pom-pom, and loop it round, tie it on itself. Um, this is really easy to tie up as well. It all holds in place. You you know you hang on worry about your knots falling loose because it's all nice and snug, especially with the really thick pom poms like these pom pom pals. You can get a nice tight knot with relative ease. Um, I still do a double knot. I think I do a double knot anyway. I do prefer and I just like that extra layer of security in my pom poms. Um, and then well, I'll come back in once we've done that bit. Once you've all got yourself tied up nice and tight and secure, as happy as you feel you are, it's really easy to get the pom-pom out. You can either take the, you know, the front half and lift those two flaps up first, or take the back half and flap those two. Either way, get all your flaps up, and then you can literally just pop one side off and pull the pom-pom out. It's so nice and easy. These are... Like I say, I've, I've hoped them before uh, to lots of people who are interested in like, doing pom-poms and wool craft and whatnot. They're so much fun. They pop together and apart so easily. They're really easy to use uh, compared to a lot of the other methods, a lot of the old, old, old school methods, like the dreaded donut. We don't want cardboard donuts ever again. Not when there's pom-pom makers out there and even scraps of card with windows cut out and toilet roll tubes. They're all far superior to the donut. So this is our little shaggy panda pom-pom. Um, now this is up to you if you go for the next few steps. This has its own appeal. I, I do like the shaggy looking panda too. Um, so if you want to keep it all as pom-pom-like as possible, then I just stop here, maybe give you know, give it your standard little trim up um, if you want it, or just keep him as he is. See, he looks, he's got character. Um, we go for, obviously, the full hog to show people. Um, I've never left one shaggy, but I've been really tempted since seeing this one back and doing the voice, voiceover and editing and whatnot. Because it, it does have some sort of charm. Um, so for those of you that are going for like the full trim and shaping of the face and the felting of the eyes and whatnot, we're just going to start now with a loose trim all over, but we're not going to touch the ears. And when it comes to the eyes, you're going to want to cut in at a slight angle and curve out again uh, to sort of get that shape where the eyes dip in a little bit. And they'll be the same for uh, just above the nose, you'll want that to dip in a little bit because you want the nose to be protruding a little bit so we don't tend to trim that too much in comparison to the rest just yet um, but the rest and then the rest of the face you want it as circular as possible and as perfect of a circle as you can get around the back of uh, sphere sorry and all the shaping is in the front so general trim general trim curving in around the eyes and above the nose leaving the ears as they are completely right now 
um, and then curving off the nose a little bit so it's not stuck out there because it'll end up looking as long as the ears you don't need it that long so when you've trimmed the whole face down to where you're happy with it then go back and trim the nose a little bit and leave the ears we don't want to touch them yet the, the longer they are the easier it will be to felt them when we get to that stage
we are very nearly done with part one of Pom Pom Pals Panda Edition. Um, with voiceover because I forgot to adjust the setting on the mic. So it's not going to be as clear as the second part, but it does mean those of you who like the music will have the music back in. Uh, though I will do some videos in the future with good audio, not voiceover, um, and music to see who likes that combination. Um, so I know some people find it relaxing rather than having, you know, a, a bout of damn near silence. Some people prefer to have the relaxing background music. Um, other people don't mind. They like to just hear the voice and listen to the sounds of whatever I'm doing. So yeah, I will be doing one like that in the future. Um, and yeah, I will get part two up very shortly. Um, for those of you who want to just crack on with having a go. Um, thank you so much for stopping by and checking me and my channel out. It does mean a lot. I'm getting so excited to keep putting things up and see that people are interested and like what I'm doing or like what they're hearing like what they're seeing. Uh, I'm very, very grateful. Um, so yeah, big thank you to everyone. Um, and yeah, take care. Hopefully see you again soon.